Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro.com, and today we're going to begin an exciting journey here at Corsetro in covering cryptocurrency, blockchain development, and distributed ledgers, and using all this stuff to create decentralized apps. Uh, and so today we're actually going to start out something you know it's really simple and that is using an API from a service called cryptocompare.com and gathering data based on the current cryptocurrencies. So this is important of course if you're a developer going forward because this stuff is going to explode in popularity as it has been essentially. So with this tutorial um, we're going to be focusing on Vue.js but we're also going to be doing React and Angular coming up. So if you're watching this, you know, like a week down the road after the upload date, good chance it's already done. So you could check the description in YouTube and also Cresetra.com. So let's get started. So uh, first, we're just going to be creating a very simple interface that will essentially just list out some predefined uh, cryptocurrencies along with their US dollar price, their current USD price. But uh, this crypto compare service, it gives you a ton of other options and data that you can work with. So this will start as a serving point just to get you up and running in these three popular front end JavaScript frameworks. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, Coursetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so... First, prerequisites. Uh, as always, you know, over most of my tutorials, you're going to need Node.js and npm. Open up your console or command line, type in Node V, and then npm V. And if they give you version numbers, great. If not, you're going to need to install it. So you're going to head on over to nodejs.org, go to the downloads, select the appropriate installer based on your operating system install it with the default options and then reload your console or your command line and rerun these commands and it should work this time. Okay, so now starting the Vue.js project, we're going to use the Vue command line interface or CLI to get us set up with a basic Vue project. So once you have Node and NPM installed, we're gonna go and type NPM install Vue CLI and global so that it installs it on our machine. We don't have to do this once. And I'm just going to pause while this goes through. All right, once that is finished, hop into wherever you place your projects. I'm in my code folder. And we're going to use the Vue CLI we just installed to create a new project. So the syntax for that is Vue. That's it, just basically accesses the actual CLI. Init, which means to initialize or start. We're going to use the Webpack starter template, which is a build tool for handling assets. And then Vue hyphen crypto and that's just going to be the name of our project so this is going to run through and it's going to give us a series of prompts as we see here so i'm just going to hit enter enter author blah 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 yep enter we'll say yeah in case we want to have a router later on we're not going to in this tutorial but just do it anyhow uh yes standard and I'm just going to hit no on this option or question rather and no here as well. All right. So then we're going to CD into it. So CD view crypto. And then we're going to run npm install to install all of the dependencies based on the package.json that was created when we ran the view init command. So I'm just going to pause this because it can take a little bit of time. All right. Once it's done. Simply run npm run dev, and this will launch a de the default starter template that was installed, and I also a local development server. So it just popped up off screen. I'm going to pause and bring that into view, and there we go. Very 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 easy, as you can see, is just to, you know get started with a Vue.js app. So next we're going to focus on you know what it takes to connect to the cryptocurrency API via Crypto Compare. Now, and first, in order to do that, we need to install an HTTP client library. I'm going to use one called Axios. So again, we're going to be working in our server here, or a console rather. And I'm using, um, by the way, 
I get a lot of questions on you know what I'm using for my console emulator. I'm, I'm on Windows here. This is simply called uh, Commander or CMDER. And at the bottom, if I bring this up, if I right click, we can launch a new console, hit start. I can go back to CD code and then CD into the project folder, which was crypto view, I think. No. There we go. Dyslexic. And then right here, we're going to run npm install Axios and save it to our package.json as a dependency. All right, so now that is done. All right, so I have Visual Studio Code, which is a free code editor from Microsoft. It's very popular right now. And I have the project folder open of View Crypto. So now what we need to do is to hop into our source, components, and hello view. Now this is the component that's responsible for this uh, landing page that we have right here. And so if you're unfamiliar with view, um, it's the files or the components are separated into three different sections. We got our template, we have our script, which handles the logic, and then we have our styling, which handles appearance down here. Uh, we're going to start here in the middle with this script because this is essentially where we make our get call to crypto compare. So the first line, we're going to put an import Axios from Axios. All right, so we used, of course, npm to install that, and Axios is here. Uh, if we search down here, we'll see Axios right there in the node modules folder. Uh, next, we're going to, within here, we're going to leave the name value here, but we're going to adjust our data right here. So I'm going to change this into, well, first I'm just going to gut this real quickly out of here, this return, and we're going to change this into a arrow function. And then within here, uh, oh yeah, by the way, we'll wrap this in parentheses. And then within here, we're going to reference the various properties that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna make, name one called cryptos, and this will be uh, an object or array of objects, and then errors for any potential errors that are returned. Um, and so that's all we need right here. We're going to put a comma because then we're going to define the created method. And this is called when components are loaded. So anything within the created function will be run or executed when the component loads. So inside of here, we're going to reference Axios. By the way, I'm going to hit control B to get rid of that sidebar. So Axios get and then the URL uh, of the API endpoint. So this would be probably a good time to actually look at the crypto compare documentation. So to do that, we have it right here. So the address here is just cryptocompare.com forward slash API. Then you click on data. And this is where um, basically they've organized the diff different types of data that you can get. Um, for our purpose, we're going to use price just to list out the prices and they have a couple different ways of doing this and it's all kind of des uh, described here along with the, uh, you know, the, the JSON data. And so we want price multi, this section right here, and it tells you the parameters and it has an example down here. So I have a URL already prepared off screen that I'm just going to copy. And this is based on the written tutorial at coresetra.com. So you can go there and grab it too, if you want. And this URL is right here. So what we're saying is we want I uh, Bitcoin, which is BTC, ETH, which is Ethereum, and then IOT, which is IOTA. And then we say uh, for this, another argument for T Sims, we want the US dollar amount of each one of these three. So we can specify other uh, currencies here as well. So if you're unfamiliar with, you know, where did I get these, uh, these essentially these acronyms, these BTA, BTC or whatever, I, if you go to a site like coinmarketcap.com, oops, and uh, you click on one of these or get them up in a new window, you'll see we have ETH up here. So it kind of tells you what the uh, 
acronym for the cryptocurrency is. So going back, let's continue on. We're going to put uh, then, we're going to take the response, and we'll say this.cryptos equals the response.data. Let's also console log the response. All right, so I'm going to save this. And of course, fix this little typo right there. It's not going to work. Also, real quickly, I'm just going to gut everything in our template. And then also put our catch here. So we'll say error. And this.errors.push the error. All right. And then also, this is created. Sorry about that. I keep on screwing things up. Yeah, it has to be created, not create. Um, once you do that, we'll go back to the browser. And if you get out the console, we'll see that we have our data object. And we also have another property called data, which stores uh, the specified uh, cryptocurrencies here. And then further, we open this up. We'll see we have our USD. Uh, and this is the current US dollar value of Bitcoin. All right, so as you can see, you know, this object returns a bunch of other properties. We only need data. So that's why right here, we're just binding this crypto here, um, this property to response.data. All right, so now what we need to do is define the actual view template above to display this stuff. And we'll do that with a div ID of, we'll call it crypto hyphen container. And then we're gonna use the V4 and that's uh, a directive for iterating over uh, like an object or array. And we're gonna pass in, we want the value and the key in cryptos. Inside of here, we're gonna put in a span class, just a left. We're gonna put the key, which is going to be, you know, BTC, ETH, etc. And real quickly, to make our lives easier, sh control shift, or no, sorry, shift, alt, and down will replicate the line. And then this will be the value dot USD. And you can figure out kind of uh, what you need to do based on looking at that console log data or by looking at the documentation where they have the JavaScript output. All right, so that's all. I and mean, this is gonna be extremely simple, obviously. Um, coming here, we'll see we have it listed out, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and IOTA. Um, but let's uh, format a little bit better. So let's go down to our uh, CSS here. We're gonna remove scoped because we don't want to limit the CSS just to this component. And uh, I'm gonna copy and paste just some quick CSS right here. So I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff and just paste in just, you know, just, just four rule sets. One for Bonnie, changing the color to light gray. A crypto container div, we're gonna make it white, blah, 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 very simple. Uh, span left, we're gonna make that bold, and then span right, we're gonna float it right. Save it. And then before we go back, we're gonna hit Control-B to get our sidebar. We're gonna go App View and get rid of this logo. Save that, and ta-da! Oh, wait, that's not working. <laughs> this is supposed to be floated over here. One moment. Oh, and that's because also in here, just get rid of all this stuff. Actually, no. I only want to get rid of a couple things here. Text center is one of them. Oh yeah, I forgot to change that to right. All right. And there we go. Very, 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 very simple as you can see, but it's actually really quick too. It's just refresh and it's like there instantly. Um, so, you know, obviously going back to the crypto compare api we have a lot of other things we can do so for instance we have this coin list this doesn't even accept any url parameters um, if we take this and we change this right here for instance paste that in um, and just look at the console log coming back here we'll see Oops, we can see this uh, This right here, XML HTTP request cannot load. 
no access control or, or allowed origin. This is a common uh, issue, but you can install this uh, Chorus plugin here on Chrome. And if we just turn this on and refresh, we got our uh, data. Do, don't even look at this simply because we haven't structured it properly for this uh, call. But if we come down here, we can see all the data associated with this. So if we go to data um, and then we go to data right here, you're going to see a massive, massive list. These are all the currencies that they support, <laughs> just a ton. So if you click on each one, they're objects themselves, full properties. I give you the full name, the coin name, uh, the pre-mined. It gives you an image URL, a name, just a lot of information that you uh, would ever probably want for your project if you're allowing people to interact with this data somehow. And so that's basically it. Uh, I'm just going to undo that real quickly and save it and come back. And there we go. Uh, hopefully this has provided you with, you know, a pretty quick starting point from which uh, you can begin to build a more robust app. Obviously, this is nothing. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to be doing here uh, is, is in the next video tutorial and also written tutorial, it's going to be based on doing the same thing here, except in uh, React and then also Angular. By the way, you can obviously fix this stuff, uh, fixing the decimal points and all that stuff uh, on your own. But yeah, that is it. And make sure to check out Corsetro.com. We're going to have cryptocurrency development courses uh, here in the near future. So be sure to check those out. All right, talk to you later. Goodbye.